it, it was like they were sharing something significant with God. One time I saw somebody like laugh, like they were telling God mm. a joke during prayer. And I remember just sitting there thinking, everyone. Here we are at Kettering Connect. I am Pastor Brendan. I get the privilege of interviewing Pastor Andrea on her last sermon. <laughs> yes. I got thrown off because you didn't say the three, two, one. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't know how to start it. Last week, was all good. Pastor Jason informed me that I got to do this and I should have paid more attention. <laughs> it was a good start. I like it. We got to do something different sometimes. Right? It, it's true. It's true. Do you want to you wanna tell us a little bit about it before I start asking? Asking you the tough questions. At sure, all. I can just kind of go through, um, like what the passage is about. Just kind of a summary. Sure, is that good. That's perfect. Okay, so in the sermon, I started out with kind of mentioning the genealogy and the fact that it's all about there are twelve families that are mentioned, and so it just means that God is bringing back kind of like a full restored Israel, even though it's not all of the families. And then it's just Ezra waiting at the river with for all these people to come gather as they're on their way journey on their way on the journey to Jerusalem. And then as they're there, they realize there are no Levites because they didn't show up. And so they have to go get them. They get some of them. And then once they're all there, right before they get on the journey, they pause and do a day of fasting and prayer because they need God's protection on the way there. And that is kind of the main focus, right? Is on yes. the fasting and prayer. Now, okay. My first question, of course, the whole time, this is what's been eating at me the whole time (laughs) is somehow you got the whole production production crew to like walk you in. They never do this for me. (laughs) They sit me in one spot and they're like, ready, set, go. How do you make that happen? I don't know. I don't know. I guess you slip them five dollars ahead of time or something. Is that what what I did? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I got to learn the tricks on this. So I was like most impressed by that. But. Well, actually, it took us a really long time because we just kept going like there and back. And, you know, and Tim was saying, okay, well, we got to do it like the first round and then the second round. And then for each time he was like doing something different to get it. So, I mean, I have like a new renewed respect for all the video people out there because it was amazing. So what you're really meaning is that. I don't have enough patience to, to do it, is what you're saying. <laughs> I, I don't have enough enough to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my, <laughs> my biggest question actually is, you knew the story you were going after. You're, you're getting into this. You know what you're reading. You know where you want to go. What is, is there anything that you learned that you didn't know about coming into it? When you cracked it open, did something speak to you that you didn't realize you were going to encounter when you did this? And did you share it? Did you not? So I've, I mean, I've known this story for a long time and I've done different things on it, but I guess the one thing that kind of just struck me again, and I didn't really go into this enough is where it says that in verse 21, chapter eight, verse 21, it says that I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might, and by the way, the word Ahava means love. I just thought it was so interesting. It's the river of love. Um, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. And so it's that part where it says that we might humble ourselves. And I didn't mention it a little bit, but the word for humbling ourselves, like that's kind of what fasting is about, that it's, but the word is very interesting because it's the word ana. And the word ana means to humble yourself, to deny yourself, but it's and so it's used in on the day of atonement in Leviticus 16 where it was on that day they all of the israelites came together and they all fasted so once a year they always fasted because it was a reminder of what god is going to do about evil and sin that he will get rid of it at one point and so on that day they fasted but it's also mentioned in exodus where the where it's talking about like the king oppressing the Israelites. So it's the same word. When they're afflicted or oppressed, when when you're afflicted or oppressed by someone, it's the same word. So it's very interesting to me because yes, it is a humbling, but it's definitely about a self-denial because that's kind of what, you know, being a, like, it's kind of like your own affliction. Your own affliction. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So you're, no, you're almost creating 
with the fasting creating mm-hmm. the affliction. I, I love that. I don't know that I realized that there was this once a year mm-hmm. remembrance of this and this fasting. That's that's incredible. Well, and it was it was pretty awesome because of the fact that it was like another word for the Day of Atonement was the Day of Judgment. And so it was just this reminder that God will be getting rid of things and therefore in order for us, you know, getting rid of evil and in order for us to to like really experience the forgiveness that God offers. If there is something about us coming to him humbly and asking for it, yeah. you know, I just think it's pretty incredible. Okay. So I didn't do all the research into this. I know you, <laughs> you did. You probably had way too many books and everything to a point that you get blurry eyed while you're reading it all. But I'm thinking the rest of the congregation is probably like me. They didn't do all the research either, but they were excited about the sermon. They want to be engaged. If there was one point that you could clarify right now that you would hope that we could all learn from this sermon, mm. the the biggest bring home point, what do you think it would be? I think See, it's it hard because be... five minutes later, you're going to be like, oh, no, I, I should have said. Right? Something else. <laughs> um, no, I think it would just be the, the main point of just – try fasting, you know, and, and really like when I think about it, it's not that like, I mean, I said this about the sermon in the sermon, it's not that God will necessarily always answer our prayers, but it is about us being drawn to him. But at the same time, there is something that God can do more when we really pray, when we are willing to fast than he could otherwise. And I can't explain it, Because I don't know how it works because there is just the battle between good and evil that's in the background all the time. And how exactly it works, I don't know. But I do know that when we pray and then when you add the fasting to it, there's just something that a God can do that he can't otherwise. Okay. The next question that I have is, this is like a completely non-Bible question. It's about something you said, but I feel like I have to ask this as, as like the, the children and families pastor, I can't miss this to say, you talked about kind of your family perspective, mm-hmm. your, you knew, let's see if I can say it right, you knew that you had someone who was fasting and praying for you. Was Mm -hmm. it in your mom or both your parents? I can't remember that. My mom, both my parents, really. Both your parents, but you you targeted more your mom. Because it was from my mom's side, really, that it came from. Okay. So you talked about that. And and I guess I sit there and I say, what is it like to Mm -hmm. know? What is the impact on you to know that you have somebody who is fasting and praying for you? I'm not sure that I've ever said in my life, I know that at this moment, somebody is fasting and praying for me. Mm-hmm. I've known that, that people have prayed for me and everything, but that, uh, what, what kind of an impact does that make on you? Yeah, it's such a great question. I really think that it has impacted all of us. So there's five of us kids, right? And I think all of us have just seen, I mean, because if somebody fasts and prays for you, you know they love you yeah. because they're denying themselves for you. And you know, so there have been things that we have all been praying for. There have been things that all of us would just come together and fast and pray for because of the example of my parents and, you know, grandparents. But I especially remember the first time I realized that really this is something that has kind of become part of our whole family is when one of my brothers, the one that I mentioned was a, is an actuary. So f- to become an actuary, you have to take tests and you... They're super difficult tests, as I mentioned before. Um, they're I hate just those kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would never, I could never do it. But anyway, so every time he would take that test, he would fast and pray. Both him and his wife, they would fast and pray before the test, like the day before, and then they he would take the test. And what was amazing is that every single time he took the test, he passed it on the first time. And that is unheard of because the most, most actuaries take years and years and years to get it done. Sometimes they have to retake the test once, twice, three times, sometimes a lot more than that. And then they just cannot get past this one test. But he passed every single one of them, except for maybe one I think he had to retake, do twice, but I can't remember right now. But it was just unheard of. And he got it done in such a short period of time, right? And that's why I was saying earlier that there is something that we cannot explain, 
There is something about when we come to God really humbling ourselves before him and just crying out to him, because that's really what it's about. It's like we're yeah. crying out to him from just the depth of our hearts of just saying, God, help me, you know, on something or just um, help help someone, right? Because we can pray for somebody else. There's just something that God can do that otherwise he couldn't. And like I said, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Well, I I loved your thing there. They they're denying themselves to sh to love you. I mm -hmm. you know, and and you think about if we're connecting with God through that, then we're denying ourselves to show God that we love Him. Yeah, that's I don't know. That that's a really that you're right. That's a really great point because it is it is like showing God that we love Him too, and and there is something about the fact that self discipline does something to us, right? And so even that part of just my parents giving showing us that example of self discipline has made a difference in all of our lives. That's a, I don't know. It's really good. It, 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 again, I I think what would our families be like if. Mm. If more of our parents, more of our kids saw their parents praying for them and, and mm. you know, appealing to God um, and fasting, incredible. Okay, getting back to it. Okay, there was a question I had. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, that's not it right here. Okay, you got to help me with this because I screw <laughs> this up every time and I told you that I would. <laughs> The, the, where the Levi tribe was, where was that again? What was the name of it again? Say, say what you think it is. No, I don't I want to think say it's what it is. It's awesome. It's so, it's so messed up. I'm going to skip it if you don't say it. All right. It's Casiphia. Casiphia. Oh, I can't even get it. Right, when she says it right in front of me, I can't even get it. Okay. So the Levi's were there. They didn't even show up at the river yep. when they're being called on. And they're there. And you said... It's like they didn't want to leave. And you said, were they afraid to go where God was calling them? Were they mm -hmm. too comfortable where they were? And I, I just, I don't know about you, church family. I thought about this because I thought, how many times have I missed something? Because I was too comfortable where I was. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want the fear of taking the risk. Or... I was afraid of something that wouldn't even have phased me or, mm -hmm. or just I wanted the life that I had right then instead of what God was offering me in the potential future. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I didn't want to take that all away from you. but No, that's a great point. I think that it's all of it, right? It could just be us being comfortable, us not really taking the time to hear God's voice and you know, because they, some of them, they, they should have been the ones who knew that yeah. everybody was supposed to go back and respond to it. And they didn't. I think it's fear. I think it's, I mean, there's just so many different things that it could be that, you know, we just have a hard time sometimes saying yes to what God is asking us to do. What do you think our, our tip would be? If we think, you know, would you have a tip? If I thought that I was in that position right now, that I was mm. too comfortable or afraid of going to the next step, or I was where that Levi tribe is, do you think you have yeah. a tip? I didn't ask. I didn't give you that for ahead of time. No, I just fine. thought of it. Um, <laughs> well, a tip for there me is to... a verse that I always go to, and that's Joshua 1, nine, where God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that has been like, my, I don't know if you, if you call it, if that's even the right way to say it, but like a signature verse for me and for my life, because I love that God says, you know, I have, I not commanded you. So just go out there and do things. And I have to be reminded of it all the time because otherwise I will, you know, stay away in fear or just maybe in fear of, I will not do things right. Or, you know, like there's just so many different Things. Well, what, what an incredible go-to verse. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe I should put that on a card inside of my Bible. You know, <laughs> steal that right from mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> I guess I guess God gave it to all of us. You can't yes, own it. That's right. <laughs> I, I can't. can put it in my Bible. <laughs> I can't. Um, I, I another point that I I picked up on was Ezra was afraid to ask, ashamed, ashamed to mm -hmm. ask for help. Mm -hmm. Um. And and it's interesting because yet when he turns to God, he follows God. And 
on one hand, I, I, don't, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to interact with that because on one hand, we shouldn't be ashamed to ask for help. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, God led him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have any any yeah. any insight here? I for think me? it's really good. That's a great observation. And in Nehemiah, which is the next chapter, we have Nehemiah doing the exact same thing where he's bringing a group back to Jerusalem, and it says in verse. I think it's like the end of verse nine. It says the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. And so he's doing the exact same thing. And this time the king does provide an escort. protection and yeah. escort. And, but this time for Ezra, he does not. And so to me, it really has to do with just what, what is in, in Ezra's mind at this point where he really wants the king to know that God is real. And yeah. so he wants him to do something that this king would realize that, oh, well, this is not just a normal thing for a group to be protected, you know, going through something like that. And so I think he had this, this mission in mind of this is what, how he wanted it to also reach the king. No, that's, that, I don't know, that was, I caught that and I'm like, do mm-hmm. we, are we ashamed to ask for help? Do we ask for help? Mm-hmm. And then it is, I, I don't know, it's. But God led. Yeah, he did. And yeah, I think you're right that definitely there is times to ask for help, you know, not just kind of assume that things are going to happen. But what I like about this, they they didn't just assume God is going to take care of them. They fasted and prayed for it because they knew that it was a supernatural thing that God would have to do. Okay, so um, you, you talked about the offering. They mm-hmm. they made this giant offering to God. Yeah, at the end. And you described it two ways. Um, I, and I'm not sure I'm going to say it right. This is my problem. They <laughs> they made a commitment, a sacrifice, but it was also the like incense. I want to say incense, but the, the smoke, the the smell, the I can't remember the two things. I shouldn't have brought this up. I don't remember up. saying no. You. Go ahead. I don't remember saying anything about incense, but I do. I did say that there were two offerings. Two offerings. So there was the the forgiveness offering, so asking yeah. for forgiveness, and then the other one was the burnt offering. And the burnt offering is the one that they offered in the temple in every morning, every evening. And then you as a person could also come and do a burnt offering. And the point of that one was instead of asking for forgiveness, it was all about a commitment. So I kind of think of it as communion now when we wash each other's feet and we you know, drank the the bread and the juice. The whole point of that is you saying, I rededicate my life to you, God. Okay, so that is less why we're doing communion. And yeah. so that's the same thing with the burnt offering. It was just like them saying now that, you know, we want to t- let you know, God, this is what we want to do. We want to live for you. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what I was meaning. No, you got mm-hmm. it. It was okay. the... Yeah, you got him. I in my mind, I saw the smoke going up from the oh, burnt there you offering, go. That's and I great. was, I was thinking, <laughs> pictures of are the, awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's that audio bible I've been listening yes. to. That's what it is. I see these things now. Yeah, that one's amazing. Um, okay, so let's see. I want to see what else I got here. Um, you said there have been times when you fasted and you didn't pray, mm. and. But you said fasting and prayer is about time with God. Mm-hmm. So can you break that down a little bit more? It sounded like when you're fasting without prayer, that's not the right way. Yeah. So at least that's what I found in my life, that when I would fast and not have the time for God, then it was just like a diet, right? Like, I don't know if that's... There no, no, some, that makes sense. I mean, kind, kind of something like that, right? I don't know what else to call it, but it's it's really not about me humbling myself and spending time with God because it has to be combined with that. Like that's why it always says the prayer and fasting it always comes together because you are taking that time to be with God and to talk to Him and not just starve yourself. <laughs> well, the the symbolism of that, I, I mean, I was just really caught off guard by this, the whole symbolism of that. You're saying, I want to spend time with God and he's like the bread of your life. Mm. And I'm going to deny what I, the fuel of my life to mm-hmm. keep me alive, mm-hmm. the sustenance I need to stay alive because you are what I need to stay mm. alive. And I was like, oh. And so if you're cutting that That's food it. out, and you you said this, so I'm, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you're cutting that food out to spend that connection with God, the meaning of that 
Mm-hmm. It's just incredible. I mean, it's almost like you're prioritizing your life right on the spot. And mm-hmm. you're saying, God, you are the most mm-hmm. important thing. Almost that yeah. I'm rededicating to you above even what it takes to keep me going. Yeah, no, you're I that love important. that. That's right. Because it's about me acknowledging that I need God. Yeah. I, it was incredible. I don't know. We talked about that. Okay. So now I'm I'm gonna jump. To your, this I was blown away by this. So you got to tell me a little bit more about this. I have, I I do church family. I don't know about you. I've had times in my life where I have prayed for somebody, but your grandmother mm-hmm. fasted and prayed for this guy at their church seven years, one day a week. Yeah. For seven years, and I, in my life, I found. I mean, I've prayed for somebody, and I've thought after a week. Is this working? <laughs> um, exactly. I thought after a month, do I keep doing this? Yeah. After two months, I'm like, God, you just need to take over and get this. You, <laughs> yes. you just keep this prayer like ditto. <laughs> yes. All right. Can I just say ditto uh-huh. and be done? Exactly. I've done that before where I'm just like, okay, God, you know, you know, I'm praying for this person, right? <laughs> but a day a week, I, I'm one mm-hmm. day a week for seven years. Yes. D- tell me about this. I don't know. I want to hear. So, I mean, I don't. I wasn't there, obviously, when that happened, but I always remember my, you know, my mom talking about this and then my grandma and there, I, and I kind of, men- I kind of mentioned this during the sermon, but there was something about my grandma that was just different. Like, I don't know how to explain it except for the fact that she was so close to God. So she has journals. She, she wrote journals from her life about just different things that had happened in her life. And so she has all these miracles that God did because of the prayer, the time in prayer that she spent. I mean, there was just, there's just one that I'm thinking of, and I probably um, can mention that at some point during some sermon, but where she was praying because my grandpa was in prison for being a, a pastor. And so she was with, or she had her kids and she had absolutely no money left. And she was praying for God to do something because she needed wood for, for the fire. It was winter and they just couldn't keep warm. So she had prayed over that. She wrote that down. And then the next morning, a neighbor came with a thing of full of fire, just, you know, full of, full of fire, full of wood that she could use. And I'm he told her, that. <laughs> yeah, I know. and he told her, he said he had a dream during the night and in the dream God told him, you need to bring her wood. Wow. You know, I mean, she just had these incredible stories and her journals, like there has been a fight within my family, within my mom's family for her journals. Oh, really? Yes. Like a literal one, because there has been like somebody really wanted the wanted wanted the one or the other. And they've just like been, you know, keeping them and then saying, no, this one's mine. And, you know, people just like actually like that's what they want, her journal. So it's just it's funny. Incredible. <laughs> uh, incredible. Mm-hmm. Now, now, if you would have done it, I, I, this is just totally a joke. If you'd have done it where you said <laughs> seven years, he came to church. He asked my mom out and that's my dad. That would have been an incredible plot that, twist. But yes. I guess. <laughs> I'll take what your story was fantastic the way it was. I, I guess I don't need the plot That's great. twist. Um, so a, a, you said, and I, I've never thought about this, prayer and fasting in my mind when you're doing this for somebody else should be about connecting them to God. But you said prayer mm. and fasting does as much for you as it does for them. Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Because... Yeah, and again, how do we explain it? I don't know, but that's that's how it works. You it's know? just these. God has these crazy principles. Sometimes, yeah. if you want a if you want a life, give yours away. Yes. If you want, if True. you want to be blessed financially, give yes. that. You know, tithe. You know, mm-hmm. all these different kind of crazy things mm-hmm. that go on there. This is like one of those principles, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's a really great point. So uh, I don't, I'm trying to jump through the, the, I've got like two more things and one is just totally my thing. It's, it's not your thing. <laughs> but this waiting on God, I mean, I, I was thinking about this, this, this impacted me when I listened to it because I'm like, I, I, I believe that I'm a patient person. Um, I, I think, but then you compared it to going to fast food mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> 
Is that how I wait on God? Do, do, mm-hmm. do you have anything you want to, can you share yeah. on that? No, I think that's a, I, I, I think of that a lot because I, I could totally, and that's why I was mentioning Chick-fil-A, like that is exactly what we oftentimes want because that's what we're used to. We're used to getting everything like that. Just like that. And, and you think about, there's a certain value in waiting though, mm-hmm. is, isn't there? I mean. Yeah. That's why it's that time. The importance of time. The importance and of giving time. And giving that, giving God that time too, you know. I, there's some kind of a saying that I've, I've heard before. I don't know if I would say it right, but something about um, that, like God's timing is not as our time is not like our timing, right? And so then sometimes you have to wait. There's, it's I can't think of what the saying actually is, but that is true. We don't always know. <laughs> we we you know in life is so much faster now that I mean. Amazon has even gone to this one day shipping and you're like, oh, do I have to wait two days to get that? It didn't come the very next day. That makes me so (laughs) mad. Yes. And yet, what about those times that God asks us to wait? Mm -hmm. And the the blessing is richer in waiting. Well, and even David in Psalms, I don't have the one pulled up right now, but he says that a lot. He says, wait on the Lord. Right? I mean, it's, it's just like one of the things that he says, wait on the Lord, because it does sometimes take time and we have to be willing to wait. We don't want to, but that's how it works. <laughs> we got to wait. Now you said, I love this. All right. Pray like it's weird. Yes. <laughs> pray, pray like it's weird. All right. Because yes. nobody wants to be the weirdo. Exactly. Right? And, and I love that. But it took me back. All right. If I can share, like this was, this is where it took me. My, my visual is I remember going to college, um, I, that was my first time on my own. I mean, I didn't go to boarding school or anything like that. Going to college, and, and I remember I, I didn't know anybody. I was from Florida. I went all the way to Andrews. There were like two people from my class there, and I don't know if I was ever at lunch with them. And I remember sitting there looking over this this sea of people coming in, and I was watching people come in with their food and sit down. And Some wouldn't pray. Or some, you put their head down real quick and said a quick prayer. Mm. But I remember there were always a few that would come in and they would pray. And they would, it was like they were sharing something significant with God. One time I saw somebody like laugh, like they were telling God Mm. a joke during prayer. And I remember just sitting there thinking, I want to know God so well that even when I'm praying for a blessing for my food, that we can joke, mm. that mm. I can have that type of a of a connection. And I'm like, and that still seems weird when you say it. I yeah. mean, when, when I say it to myself and I hear you pray like it's weird. Mm-hmm. No, that's beautiful. I think that is, that's really what it's about. A deepened, deepened relationship with God, right? And that's why we're talking about moments to momentum, because all of these are moments that we can spend with God that then do propel us forward in our relationship and help us grow in him. That's why we're talking about what we're talking about. Well, I think we walked all the way through your sermon, but I, I want to personally say on behalf of me and, and everyone who, who watched it this week, um, who interacted with you through your mm. sermon, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, for, mm. for giving us challenges to, to, Walk deeper with God. It's easy for us to see prayer and fasting as the title come on and mm-hmm. say, I don't know about this. But mm-hmm. it's so good when we get to dissect it and get in there mm-hmm. and say, wow, I need to pray like I'm weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I need to fast yes. in a way to tell God that he's more important than mm. that next meal. Mm. I and love then that. Any of that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Would you would you pray with us sure. as, as we sign would love to. Here? Lord God, I just want to put us all into your hands. Like Brendan has just been saying, I just pray that you help us to pray like it's weird or just pray that even though somebody else might think it's weird, just help us to be serious about you and to seek you and our prayers and maybe even take the time to fast. Because there is something that it does that we don't understand. But I just pray that you keep drawing each one of us closer to you. And I put us all into your hands. 
I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll see you later, church family. Thanks yes. for tuning in. See you next time. I should get like a bald wig and put on. It's a little scary to electrocute a pickle. So how does how do we usually start a Kettering Connect? Do I say, hey, if we screw up during it, can we say cut? Okay, so is that it? Three, two, one. Let's just start. Okay, yeah, so ready. we go.